why does South Africa have three capital cities? Hello and welcome back to Africa Revealed, the channel where you learn new things about an old continent. Sometimes you have to push aside sentiment and just prick your ears and listen. Today we will be zooming in on one interesting fact about South Africa. Did you know that South Africa has three capital cities? It is actually also the only country in the world that has three capitals. If you ask a South African, like the scriptwriter herself, they know about the three capital cities and will probably be able to tell you their names, maybe their functions. But it is not common knowledge as to why the country's capitals had to be split into three individual cities. Luckily for you, dear watcher, you have Africa revealed and we will now reveal South Africa's reasoning behind having three capital cities. But before you sit back, relax and learn a thing or two, remember to subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to reveal a few more African gems. If you like what you hear, punch the like button and if you really like what you hear, tell us in the comments. The three capitals. When searching for South Africa's capital on Google, one of the further search results are what is the real capital of South Africa? It seems to confuse the world that this country could have more than two capitals. A South African would only shrug and say, It's true, my bro, and indeed it is. But this is just one of the things that makes South Africa so unique. The three capital cities of South Africa are Pretoria, Bloemfontein, and Cape Town. The three cities play the role of administrative capital, the judicial capital and legislative capital representatively. What this means is that the state administration is run in Pretoria. Bloemfontein houses the Supreme Appeal Court and Cape Town is home to the legislative parliament such as the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. As I will discuss later on in this video when looking at each city individually, all of these three cities used to play an important role in the country and sometime in the past prior to 1910. Therefore, the choice of which city or cities to choose as capitals weren't the hardest decision to make. Let's jump into the cities. The administrative capital. The administrative capital of South Africa is Pretoria. It was chosen as a capital because it used to be a capital during the apartheid years and all South Africa. It should also be noted that Pretoria had long been the home to foreign embassies and governmental departments, making it a practical decision to not change its title as capital. Pretoria's position next to South Africa's largest city, Johannesburg, also makes this decision a wise and convenient one. Joburg, Pretoria's neighbour, is also the home to the biggest and busiest airport in South Africa, O.R. Tambo International Airport. To celebrate the union of the Cape, Natal and Transvaal in 1910, which is also when the three capitals were chosen, the Union Building was built in Pretoria. The Union Building forms the official seat of the South African government and has a history of marches and protests hosted there which brought about significant changes to the country that are still in use and respected today. It is customary though, not law, that the president resides in the administrative capital. This means that like America has its White House, South Africa also has its presidential residence. The South African presidential residence is called Masamba Ndlopfu which was formerly known as Libertas but changed by President Nelson Mandela when he became president in 1994. The Tonga Masamba Ndopfu translates to the new dawn in English. Interestingly enough, the garden of the presidential residence is actually classified as a cultural heritage site. 
the judicial capital. The judicial capital of South Africa is Bloemfontein. It used to be the capital of the province Orange Free State prior to the Union of South Africa. Bloemfontein, which means fountain of flowers, is centrally located in the country, making it a very practical location for the judicial capital. Thanks to its previous title and excellent location, it was decided that Bloemfontein II would stay a capital of South Africa. The most important part of the judicial capital, which is the Supreme Court of Appeal, SAC, is found here. Bloemfontein was appointed as judicial capital and home of the Supreme Court of Appeal, like Pretoria too, as part of the Union of South Africa in 1910. The role of the SAC is to take on and review cases that are appealed. The judgment of the SAC overrules that of the High Court as well as all magistrate courts. Despite its current vital and respectable status, Bloemfontein holds a darker part of South Africa's history. Bloemfontein was founded as a fort for the British Army back in 1846 and under British influence, a form of racial segregation was already implemented since the 19th century. Therefore, Bloemfontein was already implementing the concept of apartheid a hundred years before apartheid became a thing in South Africa. The Legislative Capital the legislative capital of South Africa is the famous city of Cape Town. Since the city has been a host for parliament since colonial days and used to be the capital of the British Cape Colony, it was deemed fitting to remain a capital city. Cape Town is the oldest city in South Africa and probably the best known too. Being the oldest city, the country's first parliament and a locally appointed Prime Minister was formed at the Tain Ice in the Cape, though still under British rulership. The Tain Ice is still in use and serves as the President's office at the moment. Being the legislative capital means that the mother city occupies the seat of the nation's parliament, which consists of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. As mentioned earlier, it is customary for the president to live in the administrative capital but not set law. The current president of South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa, has chosen to reside in the legislative capital, Cape Town. Because Cape Town used to be way station for traders, people from all over the world started settling and living there, making it the most racially integrated city prior to the mid-20th century, which was when apartheid came into being. The city sadly took a hard hit when apartheid was implemented and more than 60,000 residents were forcefully removed from their homes. Luckily, one can look back at it now and know that it's in the history. Cape Town has made its way back to being the most racially integrated city in the country and currently has a reputation similar to that of a first world country. Why three capitals? To put it simply, the decision of three capitals was implemented through compromise. The three capital cities are a result of political and cultural struggles through British colonialism and apartheid to name a few. The struggles were not a deciding factor, but it did help to shape the cities as we know them today. At the time of the Union, the country was only starting to work together and still needed to learn to trust each other. Therefore, it was decided that there should be three capitals instead of one so that there could be a balance of power through the country. As I already said earlier, all the current capitals were already politically prominent and important. So it was easy to adapt to the new situation no new cities had to be reintroduced, politicians already knew where to go and how to get there and the most important buildings were already built too. 
I trust that you learned something new today and found some of the facts quite interesting. Leave a like if you learned something new and don't be afraid to post any questions you might have in the comments. The fun part now is that if you ever visit South Africa, you'll be well informed and may even have a few places on your checklist that you want to visit. Think about the Union Building or the Dainhais perhaps. But if you haven't added enough places on your checklist yet, I recommend subscribing to my channel Africa Revealed. We are still on a journey discovering and revealing Africa's most beautiful and interesting places to our watchers. See you next time.